Okay, this is going to be a product review for the Benighty Copper Fungicide. I basically bought this product to deal with the early and late blight this year. I really have had enough of, of the early and late blight problem. It's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse every year. It's, I, it's just getting to the point where I can't grow tomatoes anymore because of these diseases. And I need to deal with this problem. So normally I don't apply a fungicide to my plants, not even one time. But in this case, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I have already applied this product one time. And there's pros and cons to using it. But I already applied it. It seems like it helps. It's hard to say. I mean, it almost, when it comes to early and late blight, it doesn't seem like anything helps you. Uh, you just got to keep applying the product on a regular basis. Make sure you mix it in half doses. So it's telling me, you know, mix, uh, I don't know, uh, two, what was it, two, uh, two scoops or whatever it was, two grams or two ounces, uh, liquid measure, three teaspoons to one ounce, or a dry measure. I, you got to read the instruction. I, I, if it said two teaspoons, I put one. That's basically, I put 1.1 ounces to a gallon of water is what I think I, I did, 1.2 ounces. And I sprayed it down, and for the most part, it didn't really do any damage to my tomato plants. But I had a volunteer on the side that I was growing, and I figured, yeah, let me give the... The, the volunteer was perfect. There was absolutely no blight on it or anything. It was beautiful. It was, I mean, it was doing absolutely great. And I took the sprayer, and I sprayed it down really good because I figured it's a volunteer. And I don't care if it dies. I just want to see if, if it, this will do any damage if I soak the hell out of the plant with this... And so I kept spraying it and soaking it really good, and it burned off half of the plant. So you got to be careful with this stuff. It will burn out your, your tomato plants when you're dealing with blight. And this, this, I bought this mainly for tomato blight. There might be other diseases that you can use it for and other plants like potatoes and maybe peppers. But I mainly bought this because of the blight that's getting on the tomatoes. Really, that's the only thing you really need to spray out here. It's the tomatoes. The tomatoes get infected and cucumbers might get downy mildew. So yeah, you can apply this to the downy mildew on your cucumbers or your pumpkins. But the tomatoes, no, you have to spray those. And there is no other way to deal with it. So this is one of the options I tried. I might try in a the future, there's an iron oxide type of antifungal that treats another type of um, uh, like septoria, uh, not another type of fungal disease, but it's another, it's, they say it's more effective and more organic than the copper. So I might try that one next year. I'm going to use some more of this this year. I'll uh, spray these plants maybe once or twice more. I'm also going to spray my grapevines with it because they're getting uh, rust spots on it. So we'll do that and uh, we'll try this product. Now, I'll give you a closer look at the, the front of it. You can read about what it is. Now, I never used this product before, but I'm going to give you my interpretation and my opinion and what actually the results that I observed from using the product. All right. So that's the front of it. Here is the. Here's the instructions. I'm not going to show you all the instructions, but it tells you how to mix what and, and how to apply it for each vegetable and each disease. So it's really detailed on it, and I recommend highly that you follow exactly what it is that you're going to treat and how you're going to treat it, and, and just go by that. But all that, all that information is going to be in, inside this instruction booklet, and you know it's going to open up on the back. You're going to see this information. I'll flip you through one or two pages so you get an idea, you know, what you're looking at. All right, that's what that's going to look like. You probably can find this online, but in case you can't, you got it right here. Just zoom in and, and uh, expand your screen and pause the video as you feel need so you can read. But you can see what it says, you know, when you open them up. You can see it tells you the detail about everything. All right, and I'll show you the color of it. Come on, it's got this child safety cap on there. It's a real pain in the neck. Well, basically, I'm not going to dump it out to show you, but I'll show you what it looks like on a cap. That's the color of it. It's like a blue creamy type of stuff. It's very thick like milk. Okay, just so you know, this isn't a little light liquid. This is pretty powerful stuff. This is a concentrate. Now, I bought this on Amazon, and I read a, a, letter, I read a lot of reviews on this. 
and a lot of people gave it good reviews as far as using the uh, using this for their plants, and it, there had nothing bad really to say about it, and it seemed to work for everybody. So definitely um, check it out on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description. You can you can pick it up on there. I'll also leave you a couple of links to some other products that I looked at that I might consider as an option. Like I told you, the iron. There's an iron type of fungicide. And there's a, there's a couple other that I looked, others that I looked at that I'm interested in. So I may end up maybe buying those next year as, as a review product and I'll see how it works on my tomatoes. And so I may be trying those again next year. But I'll include those links in the description. You can check them out as well. So like I said, you know, that's what it looked like. So what, what are my, what's, you know, what, what is my experience? What are the results of actually using this? Well, I just told you I sprayed the one plant and I really doused it really good. Like I sprayed it up and down and soaked that plant with this stuff like you wouldn't believe with the regular mix. And that was way too much and it burned off half the leaves off the plant. But I took that same mix and I went around and sprayed all my, my tomato plants out there with a light spray. If you look at my video, uh, Fusarium versus Verticillium, I believe it was. No, it was um, Early Blight versus Late Blight. I'll leave a link for that also in the description. That video, I showed you how I applied it. I'll put that right below the, the main description. You'll see it right before the links to Amazon. So you'll see that link for the for, for Sarium versus Verticillium, that video. In that video, you can see how I applied it and how I mixed it. So I applied it to my plants, and it didn't burn off any of these plants. If it did do any kind of damage, it was on the lower leaves that were already damaged. Um... What I can say is that it's hard for me to say whether it was really effective or really working or not. And the reason why I say that is that if you watch that video about early blight versus late blight, if you watch that video, you'll hear everything I'm saying in there about how I think the plant's immune system is already fighting it off. So it's hard to say how effective this really was. I didn't really have a major epidemic of early blight or late blight and it just seems like when late early blight or late blight or even septoria because a couple of my plants showed signs of septoria as soon as i seen it it just seemed like it stopped in its track so my plants seem to be fighting it back now i don't know for sure but it just seemed that way I, usually when my plants got early blight within a week my plants are almost stripped down dead that's how bad it is up here this year it's not really doing that it did get a couple spots on it and but i added this to it anyway as an extra measure of preventativeness and i sprayed them really light i did not soak the leaves or the plants and everything i just gave it a nice little wackadoo all the way around and it was more than enough i mean i used a gallon's worth on all my container gardens let me just loosen you up you see all my tomatoes outside on my driveway Okay, I used, I used it over there, all right? And I used it all on that, and I used it on all my greenhouse plants, and I sprayed everything down except my pepper plants because they, they never get any of these diseases, really. They don't show any signs of that. But all that stuff, and I even went into my garden outside because I want to go into my outdoor garden, but they're getting attacked by the early blight, and so I don't even want to go in the garden because of that reason. So I even went around to them in the, in the outdoor garden and sprayed them, plants down pretty good too. I just soaked them because they're all volunteers. So I soaked them up. And uh, what I can't say is it does seem like it is helping. It, you need to apply this like they say too. If you don't apply according to what they say, you're giving, you're letting the, what happens with early blight and late blight, believe it or not, and this is true from what I've read on several different forums and things like that. And the research I've done on, on you know, the, the uh, early and late blight, what happens is, is the plant develop the uh, not plant the early blight and late blight develops a resistance to your fungicides. So you might use this this year and it worked and it held it back, but next year you might go to use it again. And it does absolutely nothing because it became resistant to the copper. It doesn't kill it off now. It, it formed a new thing. So now you're going to have to go with another fungicide, which would be like a copper uh, a uh, an iron fungicide based fungicide. There's several others you can buy out there. 
So that can and does happen. It, it becomes resistant to your fungicide. So it might work for the first couple of years and then maybe one day you go to use it. It doesn't seem like it's doing anything. That's because the blight became resistant. So you got to make sure when you apply it, you really kind of apply it exactly the way they say it and you really fight it back so it dies. You don't want it to become resistant, like kind of live, like I sprayed it a little bit that, and if I didn't apply it again in seven days it, to finish it off, it, there's a good chance if it survived that, it develops a resistance. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you knock it out and you, you kill it completely. Don't mess up with the follow through. That's what's going to cause you more damage. If it tells you to apply it in seven days after the first application and then you do that and then you get a little more thorough, but don't overdo it because you will burn the leaves. I did on that other plant, so uh, it's a learning lesson. Thank God I didn't do that to all my plants because I would have burned all my tomato plants to death. So don't do that. All right. So I just wanted to give you a pretty good review on this product. And um, like I said, I'll leave you some of the other ones down below. Uh, if you got the money, I would probably say buy the copper and buy the iron one. And I'll, I think there were a couple of others that I looked at that were different than copper fungicide and, and the iron. And, um, you know, you could try those. And some of them are or, organic type of fungicides. So they're not really necessarily a toxic chemical. Copper's, this copper is not necessarily toxic. You're not supposed to drink it, but it's not necessarily top toxic in small amounts. So if you spray it on a plant and it's raining, eventually it washes off the leaves. It's not gonna, you're not going to get poisoning from it, per se. So you can apply. You can spray it onto your fruits, a little bit on there. It's not going to absorb through the skin of your fruits, or it shouldn't anyway. And you should be fine. By the time it rains, that'll drip out and wash it off. And hopefully you don't get the late blight and early blight as bad as I've been getting it anyway. So anyway, that is, uh, that's your product review for this Bonita copper fungicide. And... Uh, Give it a try. It's not that expensive. I forgot what I paid for it, but it wasn't that bad. I think the shipping was more than the product. But if you're if you're Amazon Prime, you could probably get free shipping. So, but yeah, give it a try if you're having no success with anything else. Copper is one of the most effective. Iron is the second best choice, and uh, give it a go. It's better than losing all your tomatoes. So, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.